Killer Ring 20 Languages Killer, also known as the Killer Exchange or Killer Ring, is a ceremonial exchange system conducted in the Milne Bay province of Papua New Guinea. The Killer Ring was made famous by Bronislaw Malinowski, considered the father of modern anthropology. He used this test case to argue for the universality of rational decision-making and for the cultural nature of the object of their effort. Malinowski's seminal work on the topic, Argonauts of the Western Pacific, 1922, 1, directly confronted the question, why would men risk life and limb to travel across huge expanses of dangerous ocean to give away what appear to be worthless trinkets. Malinowski carefully traced the network of exchanges of bracelets and necklaces across the Trobrian Islands, and established that they were part of a system of exchange, the killer ring, and that this exchange system was clearly linked to political authority. Malinowski's study became the subject of debate with the French anthropologist, Marcel Morse, author of The Gift, S.I. Sur le Don, 1925. 2. Since then, the killer ring has been central to the continuing anthropological debate on the nature of gift-giving, and the existence of gift economies. Basic Description, Edit the Killer Ring spans 18 island communities of the Massim archipelago, including the Trobrian Islands, and involves thousands of individuals. 3. Participants travel at times hundreds of miles by canoe in order to exchange killer valuables, which consist of red shell disc necklaces, vagun or solava, that are traded to the north circling the ring in clockwise direction, and white shell armbands, molly, that are traded in the southern direction, circling counterclockwise. If the opening gift was an armband, then the closing gift must be a necklace and vice versa. The exchange of killer valuables is also accompanied by the trade in other items known as jimwali, barter. The terms of participation vary from region to region, whereas on the Trobrian Islands the exchange is monopolized by the chiefs. In Dobu there are between 100 and 150 people involved in killer trade, between 1 and 2 in each matri lineage. 4. Items for Trade, Edit all killer valuables are non-use items traded purely for purposes of enhancing one's social status and prestige. Carefully prescribed customs and traditions surround the ceremonies that accompany the exchanges which establish strong, ideally lifelong relationships between the exchange parties. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. An example of a killer necklace, with its distinctive red shell disc beads. Molly, one of the two main kinds of objects in the killer ring. Carry to you, partners. The act of giving, as Morse wrote is a display of the greatness of the giver, accompanied by shows of exaggerated modesty in which the value of what is given is actively played down. Marcel Morse, 1979, Sociologia y Anthropologia, ed. Technos, Madrid, page 181, such a partnership involves strong mutual obligations, such as hospitality, protection and assistance. According to the Muyu, a good killer relationship should be like a marriage. Similarly, the saying around Papua is, once in the killer, always in the killer. 5. Killer valuables never remain for long in the hands of the recipients, rather, they must be passed on 
to other partners within a certain amount of time, thus constantly circling around the ring. However, even temporary possession brings prestige and status. Important chiefs can have hundreds of partners while less significant participants may only have fewer than a dozen. 6. Even though the vast majority of items that killer participants have at any given time are not theirs and will be passed on, Damon, 1980 281, notes that for example amongst the Muyu all killer objects are someone's kitam, meaning they are owned by that person, or by a group. The person owning a valuable as kitam has full rights of ownership over it. He can keep it, sell it or even destroy it. The killer valuable or an equivalent item must be returned to the person who owns it as kitam. For example, the most important muyu men own between three and seven killer valuables as kitam, while others do not own any. The fact that, at least in theory, all such valuables are someone's kitam adds a sense of responsibility to the way they are handled, reminding the recipient that he is only a steward of somebody else's possession. The ownership of a particular valuable is, however, often not known. Killer valuables can be exchanged as kitam in a direct exchange between two partners, thus fully transferring the rights of ownership. Trading and the social hierarchy, edit. The right of participation in killer exchange is not automatic, one has to buy one's way into it through participating in various lower spheres of exchange. 7. The giver-receiver relationship is always asymmetrical, givers are higher in status. Also, killer valuables are ranked according to value and age, as are the Relationships that are created through their exchange. Participants will often strive to obtain particularly valuable and renowned killer objects whose owner's fame will spread quickly through the archipelago. Such a competition unfolds through Explore Our Developer Friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Photographed by Bronislaw Malinowski. Different persons offering Pakala, offerings, and Karabuchu. Solicitory gifts, to the owner, thus seeking to induce him to engage in a gift exchange relationship involving the desired object. Killer exchange therefore involves a complex system of gifts and counter gifts whose rules are laid down by custom. The system is based on trust as obligations are not legally enforceable. However, strong social obligations and the cultural value system, in which liberality is exalted as highest virtue while meanness is condemned as shameful, create powerful pressures to play by the rules. Those who are perceived as holding on to valuables and as being slow to give them Away soon get a bad reputation, compare, 8. The killer trade was organized differently in the more hierarchical parts of the Trobrian Islands. There, only chiefs were allowed to engage in killer exchange. In hierarchical areas, individuals can earn their own kitamu shells, whereas in less hierarchical areas, they are always subject to the claims of matrilineal kin. And lastly, in the hierarchical areas, killer necklaces and bracelets are saved for external exchange only, stone axe blades are used internally. In less hierarchical areas, exchange partners may lose their valuables to internal claims. As a result, most seek to exchange their killer valuables with chiefs, who thus become the most successful players. The chiefs have saved their killer valuables for external trade, and external traders seek to trade with them before they lose their valuables to internal claims. 9. 
the killer exchange system can be viewed as reinforcing status and authority distinctions since the hereditary chiefs own the most important shell valuables and assume the responsibility for organizing and directing the ocean voyages. Damon, 1980, notes that large amounts of killer valuables are handled by a relatively small number of people, for example amongst the Muyu, three men account for over 50% of killer valuables. The 10 most influential men control about 90% of all and almost 100% of the most precious killer objects. The movement of these valuables and the related relationships determine most of the Muyu's political alliances. Fortune notes that killer relationships are fragile beset with various kinds of manipulation and deceit. But, the recent research results of Suzanne Kuehling do not support Fortune's emphasis on cheating, and even killing in relation to King. 10. The Muyu for example state that the only way to get ahead in killer is to lie, commenting that deceit frequently causes killer relationships to fall apart. 11. Similarly, Malinowski wrote of many squabbles, deep resentments and even feuds over real or imaginary grievances in the killer exchange. 12. Gift versus Commodity Exchange, Edit The killer ring is a classic example of Marcel Morse distinction between gift and commodity. Exchange Melanesians carefully distinguish gift exchange, killer and market exchange in the form of barter, chimwali. Both reflect different underlying value systems and cultural customs. The killer, Morse wrote, is not supposed to be conducted like chimwali. The former involves a solemn explore our developer friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Malinowski with the Trobriand Islanders, 1918 Exchange Ceremony, a display of greatness where the concepts of honor and nobility are central, the latter, in contrast, often done as part of killer exchange journeys, involves hard bargaining and serves purely economic purposes. 13. Killer valuables are inalienable in the sense that they, or an equivalent object, have to be returned to the original owner. Those who receive them can pass them on as gifts, but they cannot be sold as commodities, except by the one who owns them as kitam. Malinowski, however, highlighted the unusual characteristics of these gifts. Malinowski placed the Emphasis on the exchange of goods between individuals, and their non-altruistic motives for giving. The gift, they expected a return of equal or greater value. In other words, reciprocity is an implicit part of gifting, there is no such thing as the free gift given without expectation. Morse, in contrast, emphasized that the gifts were not between individuals but between representatives of larger collectivities. These gifts were, he argued, a total prestation, see law of obligations, and not a gift. In the Western sense of the word, they were not simple, alienable commodities to be bought and sold, but, like the crown jewels of the United Kingdom, embodied the reputation, history, and sense of identity of a corporate kin group, such as a line of kings. Given the stakes, Morse asked why anyone would give them away. His answer was an enigmatic concept, the spirit of the gift. A good part of the confusion and resulting debate was due to a bad translation of that phrase. Morse appeared to be arguing that a return gift is given to keep the very relationship between Givers alive, a failure to return a gift ends the relationship and the promise of any future gifts. 
Jonathan Parry has demonstrated that Morse was arguing instead that the concept of a pure gift, given altruistically only emerges in societies with a well-developed market ideology, such as the West and India. 14. Morse concept of total prestations was further developed by Annette Wiener, who revisited Malinowski's field site in the Trobriand Islands. Her critique was twofold, first, Trobriand Island. Society is matrilineal, and women hold a great deal of economic and political power. Their exchanges were ignored by Malinowski. Secondly, she developed Morse's argument about reciprocity and the spirit of the gift in terms of inalienable possessions, the paradox of keeping while giving. 15. Wiener contrasts movable goods which can be exchanged with immovable goods that serve to draw the gifts back, in the Trobriand case, male killer gifts with women's landed property. She argues that the specific goods given, like crown jewels, are so identified with particular groups that, even when given, they are not truly alienated. Not all societies, however, have these kinds of goods, which depend upon the existence of particular kinds of kinship groups. French anthropologist Maurice Godelier, 16, pushed the analysis. Further in The Enigma of the Gift, 1999, Albert Shorwes has argued that the kinds of societies Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. Used as examples by Wiener and Godelier, including the killer ring in the Trobrians, the potlatch of the indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest, and the Toraja of South Sulawesi, Indonesia, are all characterized by ranked aristocratic kin groups that fit with Claude Levi Strauss model of house societies, where house refers to both noble lineage and their landed estate. Total prestations are given, he argues, to preserve landed estates identified with particular kin groups and maintain their place in a ranked society. 17. See also, edit. Potlatch, a similar practice among some Native American and First Nations peoples of West Coast North America. Koha, a similar practice among the Mori. Maka, a similar practice in the Mount Hazen area of Papua New Guinea. Sepik Coast Exchange, a similar practice in the Sepik Coast of Papua New Guinea. Footnotes, edit. 1 Carat Malinowski. Bronislaw, 1922. Argonauts of the Western Pacific, an account of native enterprise and adventure in the archipelagos of Melanesian New Guinea. London, Routledge and Kigan Paul. 2 Carat Morse, Marcel, 1970. The Gift, Forms and Functions of Exchange in Archaic Societies. London. Cohen and West. 3 Carat Malinowski, Bronislaw, 1922. Argonauts of the Western Pacific, an account of native enterprise and adventure in the archipelagos of Melanesian New Guinea. London, Routledge and Kigan Paul. 4 Carat The Name of the Gift, Ethics of Exchange on Dobu Island, Suzanne Kewling, Australian National University. 1998, p.212. 5 Carat Malinowski, Bronislaw, 1922. Argonauts of the Western Pacific, an account of native enterprise and adventure in the archipelagos of Melanesian New Guinea. London, Routledge and Kigan Paul. p. 82. 6 Carat Malinowski, Bronislaw, 1922. Argonauts of the Western Pacific, an account of native enterprise and adventure in the archipelagos of Melanesian New Guinea. London, 
Routledge and Kigan Paul. P98. 7 Carat Damon, F.H. 1980. The Killer and Generalized Exchange, Considering Some Unconsidered. Aspects of the Elementary Structures of Kinship. Man, New Series, 15, 278. 8 Carat Malinowski, Bronislaw, 1922. Argonauts of the Western Pacific, An Account of Native Enterprise and Adventure in the Archipelagos of Melanesian New Guinea. London, Routledge and Kigan Paul. P100. 9 Carat Wiener, Annette, 1992. Inalienable Possessions, The Paradox of Keeping While Giving. Barclay. University of California Press. pp. 137140. 10 Carat The Name of the Gift, Ethics of Exchange on Dobu Island, Suzanne Kuehling, Australian National. University, 1998, p.208. 11 Carat Damon, F.H. 1980. The Killer and Generalized Exchange, Considering Some Unconsidered. Aspects of the Elementary Structures of Kinship. Man, New Series, 15, 278. 12 Carat Malinowski, Bronislaw, 1922. Argonauts of the Western Pacific, An Account of Native Enterprise and Adventure in the Archipelagos of Melanesian New Guinea. London, Routledge and Kigan Paul. P100. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF. 13 Carat Morse, Marcel, 1970. The Gift, Forms and Functions of Exchange in Archaic Societies. London. Cohen and West. pp. 22-23. 14 Carat Parry, Jonathan, 1986. The Gift, The Indian Gift and the Indian Gift. Man. 21, 345373. Do, 10.2307 forward slash 2803096. Jsta 2803096. S2 SID 15-carat-wiener, Annette, 1992. Inalienable Possessions, The Paradox of Keeping While Giving. Barclay. University of California Press. 16-carat-godelier, Maurice, 1999. The Enigma of the Gift. Cambridge, Polity Press. 17 Carat Shorwes, Albert, 2004. H. H. Houses, E. E. States and Class, on the Importance of Capitals in Central. Sialorsi. Bijdragen tot de Taal, Land en Vulcan Kandi. 160, 172 94 du. 10.1163 forward slash 221343799000373535. References, Edit. Killer in Woodlark. Fieldwork Report, Logging or Conservation on Woodlark, Muyu, Island. By Michael Young, Department of Anthropology, Research School of Pacific Studies, Australian. National University. Archived from the original on 3 July, 2015. Retrieved 14 March, 2005. Killer, The Standard Model. Notes for reading Bronislaw Malinowski, Argonauts of the Western Pacific, 1922. Retrieved 14 March, 2005. Jerry Leach and Edmund Leach, 1983. The Killer, New Perspectives on Massim Exchange. Cambridge University Press, New York. Damon, F.H.
1980. The killer and generalized exchange, considering some unconsidered aspects of the elementary structures of kinship. Man. New series. 15, 226792. Do. 10.2307 forward slash 2801671. Jsta 2801671. Malign Alwski, B. 1920. Killer, the circulating exchange of valuables in the archipelagos of Eastern New Guinea. Man. 20. Man, Volume 20. 97105. Do. 10.2307 forward slash 2840430. Jsta 2840430. Malign Alwski, B. 1922. Argonauts of the Western Pacific, an account of native enterprise and adventure in the archipelagos of Melanesian New Guinea. George Routledge and Sons, Ltd. Morse, M. 1990. The Gift, Forms and Functions of Exchange in Archaic Societies. London. Routledge. Categories, Cultural Anthropology Culture of Papua New Guinea Milne Bay Province. Troprian Islands. Explore our developer-friendly HTML to PDF API printed using PDF Crowd HTML to PDF.